Nice little song taken from The Fairy Queen by Henry Purcell, played there by the 16, Harry Christopher's leading from a CD called Great British Coal Works. Here on 99.5 WCRB Lowell, Boston, the flagship station of Classical New England. Listener supported classical music for Boston, New England, and the world, also on 89.7 WGBH HD2 Boston, 96.3 W242AA Beacon Hill, 89.5 WNCK Nantucket, and 88.7 WJMF Smithfield Province, a service of Bryant University, the character of success. You can find us online at classicalnewengland.org, where if you look into our live from Fraser archive, you'll see a performance by the young violinist from Minsk, Belarus, who grew up in the United States, named Yevgeny Kutik. He's playing here with Timothy Bozar, the Hebrew melody. ask everyone to please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, everyone. After a <coughs> two-week hiatus, hope everybody had a pleasurable holiday weekend. Uh, do I have any public comment from the board tonight? Just like to quickly thank the Turkey Hill Gardeners. I was just noticing the uh, upper comment at least. It's, it's just beautiful with all the plantings and the work they've done out there as they do every year. I think I just want to thank them because it's fantastic. So appreciate their efforts. I would agree. It does look beautiful. <clears throat> and I want to also thank the uh, town band. Last night was the first town band concert. It was supposed to be last week, but of course the first week got rained out. So they will be going to August 3rd. So for the next few Mondays through August 3rd, uh, they play at seven o'clock and they are led by uh, our own Steve Archambault. So come out, it's a great time. They're all sponsored by different organizations. Last night it was the Lunenburg Family Lions Club uh, and other organizations will be sponsoring 50-50 raffles and food during the event. So, Also, this town beach and Whalum Lake will open. It, it's started being open on June 22nd, and it'll be open full-time through the tentative closing date, which will be Sunday, August 18th. The hours, Monday to Friday, are from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m., and from Saturday and Sunday from 12 noon to 6 p.m. Uh, there are swimming classes there and there is a cost for using it. Either you can have seasonal passes or individual days. Uh, more of this is on the website. So anybody interested in using the town beach, especially during this hot weather, please look on the website and you can use that facility. Any public comment from the public? Okay, so before we start, uh, I'm going to jump to item one of the current business, a request for a boot drive for the Lunenburg field hockey team. Yeah. Please. Um, good evening, Board of Selectmen. My name is Mary Beth Elf, and I'm accompanied by Tina Spadafore. Both of our daughters have been selected as uh, captains for the varsity field hockey team. Um, at the end of the school year, they were faced with a huge fundraising proposition. Um, the school has not had new uniforms in many, many years, both JV and varsity. We are responsible for raising several thousands of dollars, um, a number that I don't and I can't confirm at this point until I speak with Pete McAuliffe. And we've already started um, a fundraising effort. We'd like to request that we can do some canning in the center of Lunenburg. Um, we're not We've never canned before as a field hockey team. We don't, we kind of shy upon the canning idea. However, um, it is a fast way to raise money. And unfortunately, we are faced with a extremely aggressive number that we need to achieve. So I'm here tonight to request that um, we can at least get one canning date in the center of Lunenburg, um, whether it be 
June, July 20th or July 27th or any other date that might work for the town. We are willing to go into August if need be. Um, but please realize that this is not the only effort that we're making in fundraising. We are doing other things, um, but we would like to add canning to our efforts. So I would uh, ask that you appreciate our efforts and um, take that into consideration because our girls are going to have to work really hard to raise money for very much needed uniforms sure. um, that they have not been able to get through the school for many, many years, even though our athletic fees are extremely high. So with that, um, I think that's, that's what we're fine. looking for. Uh, the date should be of your choosing, not um, choosing. I don't we're think we're looking have anything, for uh, possibly July 27th. That's a Saturday. Okay. Um, and it would require that girls would be in the center of town. Um, I do understand that there are some requirements from the police department, and we are more than willing to um, oblige by those requirements in terms of vests and safety requirements that are that go along with the canning efforts. Right. Um, and I can certainly be in touch with the police department and coordinate that. Are you looking, please, and are you looking at the same two locations that most uh, fundraising efforts happen, which is right here in town center and then yes. Ray Elliman Electric Ave? Um, I think we're just looking at the center of Lunenburg okay. at this point. I don't know, Tina, do you? What's, what, what's the other one on Electric Ave? Whalem Whale Road oh. and Electric Ave at the light there. That's the other place that people usually do. <laughs> 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 I... I I think you should ask other people, but I, my experience on the few that I've done is that you get more people stopping here because it's an right, easier right. intersection and you get more people from Lunenburg here than you do down right. there. I think that I would request the center of town okay. as, our, you know, as our first choice um, in terms of canning. So. Sure. Uh, so yes, speaking with the chief is going to be important in closing that loop with the town manager That's that you've fine. spoken with the chief. Yep. This is Bertram. I just have one question, and that is that you mentioned that the girls are going to be doing the canning, right. and, and I'm not sure what the age of, of the girls are that are going to be there. What's the adult supervision going to be? There because will de definitely be um, adult supervision. Um, I know myself, and I mean, I can recruit as many moms as needed. Um, I'm going to probably be overseeing it along with Tina and some other moms. So I certainly, you know, I will be there all day. I'm going to be in charge of the scheduling and the time slots. And um, Tina may be away at that time. I don't know. Um, but I can certainly recruit as many moms as needed so that safety or any of that is not a concern. I would recommend that any, anybody who's in the street be over 18. And then if you want players there, you know, to hold signs, to tell people what it's for, I think that's great. But I think anybody who's in this intersection collecting the money should be, because it is, it is, you know. Okay, well, since they're high school students, that, that would mean that a parent would be the one canning, and then students could hold signs. Right, right. Is that what you're suggesting? That's what I would recommend. Okay, we can, we can agree to that. Yeah. Yep, I'll make sure that we have enough parental, you know, people in the street, and that the students can. And when would you be doing it from? From when, what time to what time? Um... I guess maybe like from nine o'clock until one o'clock. Okay. Does that sound reasonable or? Yeah. Anybody have any questions? Mr. Mr. Chairman, I, I certainly support the effort of, of uh, the uh, field hockey team and, and recognize the, uh, <clears throat> the need specifically for athletic teams to do fundraising. Uh, I, I, spent, I spent a little time this afternoon trying to find something in our procedures, et cetera, about canning, and I didn't. And I, I would suggest that, you know, if we approve this, and, and I have no reason not to, that we kind of think about, you know, some sort of policy or procedure for this in terms of what criteria we would support or how many or how often or mm -hmm. uh, something to that regard because I think uh, it, there's a possibility at least that it could get out of control. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman. Mrs. Bertram. I just want to echo Mr. Toll's comments. I agree that I support this and I think it's important. And, I, and even talking about children versus adults, I know in the past we have had cheerleading teams, for example, that have canned. But recently when the Boys and Girls Club came before, the concern about children being in the roadway, which I think is a valid one, was raised. And we determined that we'd prefer anyone in the road to be over 18. And I think that is a, we do need to adopt a policy yep. so that it's clear across the board what those, what those requirements are to do. Um, boot drives. 
if I might interject as a citizen of the town, I think that your suggestion is absolutely very credible because um, I know that the Lunenburg Bengals can, I know that uh, the Lions Club can, and it does get, it does get to a point where it's, it does get a little repetitive and it's like, okay, how many times do I have to drive through the center of town and give money? Um, I do know for a fact that Lunenburg Field Hockey has only canned once and it was very brief in conjunction with a, um, a car wash. So I, I do support what you're saying and I agree. So um, I might make an additional suggestion. I forget which group it was, but somebody gave a sticker out once you gave so that when you're running your errands, you, you could kind of hold it up even if it's a homemade one, you know. Okay, <laughs> kind, of, kind of say I gave on the way in, you know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> We don't plan on making this something that's going to happen on a, or requested on a regular basis. We've just been faced with a very large fundraising um, <coughs> issue. Mm -hmm. And so, therefore, we're looking for any avenue at all that we can, you know, raise money for these kids to get uniforms. I do just want to, again, echo Mr. Toll's comments. It's, it's easier at having been as a member of the Lions Club out there. It is easy. If, and, and what the Lions Club does is just a little sheet of paper. And it's a right. bright color that they put you put in your dashboard mm -hmm. so that you can see it, and that helps the people that are canning too because they can look at the vehicle and know that they've already right. given on the one one way in or out. So it does make sense and something okay. you should consider. Well, we can definitely think about doing something like that if it's gonna. Anyone else? No. Make, make a motion. motion. We approve. There we go. Mm. Second. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed? None. All right. Good Thank luck you very on much. drive. And then please just contact the town manager after you've spoken with the chief of police to make sure that all the safety, uh, you discuss safety with them. About okay. So about contact them. the police and then? Yeah. And then just follow okay. up and just say that you've talked to them. That okay. And you guys are okay with my date that yep. I threw out of the 27th? Yep. July 27th okay. from 9 to 1 right here in the center of town. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Good luck. Okay, it's seven o'clock. A request for a common victualler's license for Tarnum Williams doing business as Kabobalicious. I just like saying that. <laughs> uh, is it doesn't, it doesn't appear that she is here. Uh, okay. Well, I'd like to hear about the business. <laughs> <laughs> Did. The person say, I, I expected that the um, that the applicant would be here. I don't know if you want to table uh, it until we'll, later in the yeah, we'll agenda. We'll see if they are delayed somehow, and we will wait. So, uh, if you don't mind, two minutes early, Dave. I would say that we have an appointment seven fifteen with the Green Communities Task Force update. Good evening. How are you? Good. Uh, I figured I'd give a little time for you guys to get settled. To meet. Folks, welcome to the board. Remind people who you are, please. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Dave Blatt. I'm the chairman of the Green Communities Task Force uh, here in Lunenburg. I um, wanted to come give the board a quick update. As you know, the town meeting, uh, they, we voted, the town voted to uh, look to adopt a stretch code. That was the last step necessary in order to be fill out the application to become a green community. Um, since then, the, there is a new building code coming in, and as of now, the state has not figured out how to make a new stretch code. So there might not even be a stretch code in the future, um, as I've been told by that, our uh, uh, building inspector right now. So it was a nice vote. I appreciate everybody who came out, but it might be for a moot point at this point. Um, I'm coming to the board because the original charter the, that the Green Communities Task Force had was to investigate becoming a green community. And that was what our original charter was. We felt like we've done that charter and accomplished that, but there's still much for us, to, much to do, and much the group would like to do. So we're looking to you folks as our direction to uh, what's the next step for us. Um, we've started the task of lining up what's necessary for the application. Uh, there's, as I mentioned, there's, uh, well, as I mentioned during the meeting, but then anyway, there's five steps. Uh, three of the steps the town is pretty solid on. Uh, two of the steps, which is the uh, energy efficient vehicle uh, policy. I think you folks have seen a draft of what we're looking to propose for the town. Um, and then the, th the last step is to do a 20% pl a plan to reduce your energy com consumption by 20% over five years. Um, for that, we've done, there's been a lot of work done by uh, um, our 
our facilities folks, both Jim and John, to enter information into the system. Uh, the next, next meeting we have, which is later this month, we're going to look to try to pick a year to use as our base year to try to establish that plan for five years. However, that's just the plan. Um, there's a lot of groups and a lot of things that we're hearing going on, and we want to make sure that you folks have given a, you know, given a direction, given a charter. If it's, the green, if it's the, our group that you would like to be kind of at the middle of it, we look forward to that. If not, if there's other groups that are going to be looking to do the energy efficient, uh, we'd like to just make sure there's coordination between the different community, uh, boards and different committees in the town right now. You know, it's our understanding that the Finance Committee is looking into something. Uh, we feel like we've done a lot of the work that they would already be looking into, and it's just a matter of we don't want to try to move, trying to avoid redundancy for people, the short amount of time people have to give, things like that. So that was my main thing as I wanted to come and talk to you guys about what's next for us and what we're thinking our next charter is, but it's in the end I'm going to look for you guys to kind of, you know, I'm not looking for an answer right this moment, but looking for an answer as to what you think you'd like us to be doing, whether we stay called a Green Community Task Force or whether we change to something else as far as an energy task, at task force or something like that. That's going to be totally up to, up to you folks. The other thing I'm coming is that we are also down members. We had some members who felt basically that the major task that they joined the, join the group for was completed. So uh, they decided to you know, take, take other time and use their, those that, that evening to, uh, to do other things, mostly family things. One's just deciding to move to Florida, so I really can't ask him to come up once a month to come from Florida, as much as you guys would probably like to see him too, but that's not going to work out. So we are looking for folks in town who have a back, a, either a passion for energy conservation or have a, a, you know, a background in the trades that would be looking for HVAC, electrical, um, even construction, or anything else that would help us out and be able to you know, help guide us in, in what's, what's next and what could be done out there. So I'm kind of giving a public outcry for help. Right. You know, we're down. How many members are you short? We're down two official members, and we're, we used to have two alternates, and we don't have that. So we're down four members from the original charter, and so now we're down to f four members, f I'm sorry, five members that are actually come. No, four, yeah, four, three, four members that actually are on the committee right now. Is it? Okay for me to say I'm totally confused now about how many members you might have. I know. I was, trying, I was trying to think there for a second how many members I have. It's like the number keeps getting smaller, you better just stop. You know, none left. <laughs> so there's, there's four official members right now. Okay. Um, and we used, to have, we used to be six. Okay. So we should put those on if we have – do we keep, we keep these openings on the website somewhere, I think? Do we not? Um, for some, some okay. committees, not well, all the committees. We should. Uh, as for your charter, I mean, I, I, obviously, I want you guys to stay together till we at least become a green community. So that's not even done yet. So I would say that's one. Number two is once we get there, there's obviously going to be. Uh, this is one of the reasons why we wanted to do it because it'd be grant money. So I'd want your committee to be involved, whether it stays the same name or not, is not terribly relevant. But the point is, I want them there to be discussion about how what projects, what grants we should go for, and what they should be used for. And we'd be looking to, for your work, along with the facilities directors from both uh, the school and the town, to, I mean, those are two things that come off the top of my head, okay. uh, what you would want to do. Uh, obviously, your group probably has been talking about this more than, than we have, and I, we would look probably for some direction from you about what you believe you might do as well. So you may have more ideas than would come from, from here. Okay, excellent. Maybe the other question I would have is whether there's a standard charter for other green community task force around the state that you might be able to look at and then come back to us and then we could adopt that. Because um, I, I, I agree, th I think there's, there's future tasks that, you know, implementing grants, um, looking at other things in the town, um, I think there's a lot of work that will need to be, can to be done. I think without a doubt as we look around our buildings, you know, Finding ways to conserve energy, you know, I think your leadership and input of your committee will have to find a way, I guess, to, to work with the Finance Committee. But I think you guys have more of the expertise probably that's going to help us actually find some solutions. Um, so I would really hope you guys could play a big role in that. Yes, sir. I, and I especially look at it as we look 
to the future where we look at bringing on new buildings and what we do with some of the ones right. we have, it's you know. be uh, helpful for, to be able to uh, use uh, the grant money and be able to do what we can. As we look at the high school building, I mean, there's going to be a green component to that, you know, whether we go to LEED, what level of certification we go there. The building reuse committee is about to jump into action shortly. I mean, so there's a question there, can we save some money if we do retain? You know, one central building for uh, administration, town administration, and other uses. Uh, how we can best make use of that facility. So there's a lot of opportunity for the expertise to come to the table with a bunch of different folks, as you indicated. So I would hope that you guys would play a big role in that. Excellent. And, so, and like I said, we appreciate your sky support and look forward to continuing the work we're doing. Just want to make sure we're doing what we have the right mission. We have the mission you want us to have, let's put it that way, more than anything else. I appreciate it. Okay. Anybody else? Thank you very much. All right, you're quite Thank welcome. You. Have a good right. evening. Thank you. So let's go down to number two in current business. So approve the PPA and or pilot agreement with NewGen, formerly Mass PV1. At, the, at your last meeting, um, the power purchase agreement was presented for NewGen, and you heard from the developer. The developer... Uh, mentioned or the, the, the at the time the developer was still going back and forth with town council and there were a few minor changes that he agreed to um, verbally at, at the meeting finally just today at two o'clock I got the final power purchase agreement so I didn't send it out to you because it's 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 just too I, I can't send it out and expect that you will look through it in a matter of hours um, town council actually said at that last meeting that he thought you should have the IMA signed before you sign a power purchase agreement. Um, one of your other items is to, on the agenda, is to um, approve the disclosure because town council represents both towns and, and Lunenburg, and so um, council is required to have that public disclosure so he can work with both of the communities. So he has said that... Uh, that the power purchase agreement, again, is, is negotiated. I will send that out to you. The pilot, they're finishing up right now on uh, the Nugent project. And he expected that he could have, if you sign the disclosure tonight, that he could have the IMA for next week as well. So it seems to make sense just to bring everything together next week. Um, in terms of the EPG project, there is a new investor, not new since he was here two weeks ago but that that new investor and they're still working on the power purchase agreement they're still going back and forth um, and the pilot on that um, they can't the the bankruptcy court can't approve the lease on the property until the power purchase agreement is signed and that developer won't sign the pilot until the lease is approved, so it's kind of a, a series of things that need to happen. But we're not, we're not at the final power purchase agreement with the new investor at this point in time. So I guess I would ask that, you, um, that we table items two and three. <coughs> two at, until next week. Hopefully we'll be done with three next week, but I've been saying that for probably a year now, right? Um, and then I would ask that you approve the disclosure, determination, and consent um, so that town council can work on the intermunicipal agreement with the town of Townsend for the resale of the net metering credits. I did include in the packet the Townsend uh, Board of Selectmen has met since last week or the week before, and they did already sign that. So the town of Townsend is interested in um, negotiating this IMA, they understand that the the net metering credits is it's a 15% discount, and they are interested in purchasing whatever is available, whatever we have to sell them. So to that's them. item number five in current business. So let's just attend to that then. So Be, before we start, Mr. Chairman, I, I guess I have a clarifying question. I you know putting this whole thing together and trying to understand what it is we're we're being asked to to look at if if we are looking at a certain number of credits for our own needs plus whatever is developed as part of the IMA with another town, are we considering either new gen or EPG or both 
new gen and EPG? Well, well we, our intention, just to bring you up to speed as a board, and we've had these discussions before you and, and Mr. Ebersol were on the board, were that we would take advantage if, because the Unitil territory is so small that very few projects would be needed to meet their uh, cap that they were required by law to have, that if they happened in Lunarburg, we wanted to take full advantage of all that cap. And those credits, we would have to pay them for, for the generation of, and then we would be able to use them against our own metering and whatever was extra that went over our own utilization that we would look to another municipality or, uh, or organization that could be used for those credits um, to sell them off. And that's what we have, you know, that's, that is what we've decided to do because both of these, the generation of the net metering from both of these facilities together exceeds what our own uses it, usage is per year. Now, we could bank them. Uh, they, they're not expiring, but we would have to pay for them. So we'd be paying money in advance for things down the road. We thought it was a better idea to just take them. And then since we have the ability to resell them, to do that. Okay, thank you. And just um, one, one other piece of information. The, the town of Lunenburg's usage on an annual basis is about 2 million kilowatt hours per year, and Townsend is about a million kilowatt hours per year. And the, the reason Townsend is so much less is because they don't have schools. They're not, they're not operating schools. That's part of the regional school district. So it, it's a nice pairing, Lunenburg and Townsend, because together they, we use 100% of what would be produced. Um, these projects may pr end up producing more than that, um, or at least during their life, there are times that they will produce more. So it may be that we might want to partner with another entity as well, and the town of Ashby has also indicated that they are interested, and I, I can't remember off the top of my head what their usage is, but um, certainly would be even, well, they, Ashby, Ashby does have a school, so they, they may be close to what Townsend uses as well. Mrs. The only thing to keep in mind is that if we are considering another entity to, to absorb any overage, as was noted by co town council last week, there are only two times where we can add individuals to our accounts and, and then can resell to. So we want to keep that in <coughs> mind moving forward. Mm -hmm. So number five is to approve a disclosure and the determination and consent uh, Pursuant to MA rules, uh, the Massachusetts Rules of Professional Conduct for dual representation related to an IMA for the resale of net metering credits to the town of Townsend. Of course, this is necessary because our town council is Copeland and Page, so is theirs. So there has to be a disclosure that we're allowing them to uh, work, the same firm to work on both of our behalves to come up with the IMA. I would make a motion to approve. We'll second. Have a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All, uh, and I for myself. All opposed? None. Mr. Chairman, just a Mr. question. Bertram? Just a question. Does Copeland and Page also represent Ashby? Do you know off the top I, of your head? I don't know off the top of my head, no. Okay. Just moving forward, just to, so that we don't get bogged down. If they do, I think that if we can do one of these for next week as well, if we're even considering that, it makes sense. So. Okay, is that going down the line being signed? Talking about Ashby, we have number current business number four, which is to approve an amendment to the household hazardous waste IMA to include membership for the town of Ashby. A couple of years ago, the town of Lunenburg um, entered into a, a, an intermunicipal agreement with 10 other communities to form the Devon's Household Hazardous Waste Program. Prior to uh, forming this, we used to offer Household Hazardous Waste Day either once or twice a year at DPW. And what we found is that if, if we came together with, with some other communities, um, that we could offer this on a more regular basis for about the same cost as, as what it cost us just to have it twice a year. and and. We also found that, you know, a lot of times peop people have something they want to get rid of um, and they don't necessarily want to wait. They might not even have the ability to wait 
a couple of times a year because maybe they're moving and, and they need to take care of it. So we were fortunate enough to get some grant money through the state. and We were able to um, put together a facility over at Devon's. And we do have um, access to this facility nine of the 12 months per year. And um, we, we pay an assessment of, of $5,300, and again, that was about what we were paying to have it twice a year. And we also paid an assessment, a capital assessment, when we entered into this to pay for whatever capital expenses the grants didn't, didn't cover. Um, what we found is that um, it, it took, I think, three years to get this off the ground. Um, and there were initially some other communities that were interested, but they didn't join up initially, initially. And as it's been up and running, we found that a couple of those communities have since come back and, and expressed an interest in participating. And Ashby is one of those communities. So this, this will be, I think this is the second amendment, the second amendment. So we had one other community, and I can't remember which one it was, that came on um, after the fact. The, all of the member communities have to agree to allow someone else to come in, and the executive committee that runs this program um, authorized the director to come back and ask all of the communities to, to accept Ashby into the, um, the program. So this is a formal request to allow the town of Ashby to participate in the Devons Household Hazardous Waste Program. They will pay an annual assessment, and they will also pay a capital assessment. Um, and it's based on the same formula that all of the other communities are assessed. So there is a request before you to approve the acceptance of Ashby into this program. Now, I have a question about how it impacts, if at all, our, the, the current member contributions. And has there been any uh, pro forma about how, what, what, how that's going to change what our contribution is? I mean, by accepting them, does it lower what everyone is going to be paying? It will lower the annual assessment, um, but I don't, I don't know by how much. I don't think it will be that significant because the annual assessment isn't that high. Um, we, the, the capital assessment was a one-time assessment, so there's no, there's okay. no adjustment to that. Um, but it, it will lower our annual assessment. I, I could find out exactly how much, but that information wasn't provided, and I, I didn't ask about that. Any questions for the town manager on this item? I would entertain a motion on this item. I move that we approve adding Ashby to the household hazardous waste IMA. Or a second. second? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. The original document to sign is attached to that last, in the packet that went down. It's it probably down there. <coughs> Just needs to be the chair, I believe. Oh, okay. Just it's just one signature. So, so just send the whole packet back down. Minutes. <coughs> Thank you. Warrants? I think there's nine. Today is the ninth. That's payable. 
accounts payable in the amount of four hundred thirty three thousand five hundred eighty dollars and seventy two cents. Payroll in the amount of six hundred and fifty dollars. Another payroll in the amount of three hundred twenty five thousand six hundred ninety eight dollars and twenty nine cents. Accounts payable in the amount of three hundred twenty four thirty two. Sorry, let me take this back. Thirty two thousand four hundred sixty two dollars and fifty nine cents. Another accounts payable in the amount of seven hundred thirty two thousand three hundred ninety three dollars and ninety seven cents. And one more account um, payroll five hundred forty nine thousand three hundred thirty five dollars and fifty four cents we're not done uh, <laughs> payroll deductions hundred and twenty thousand eight hundred nine dollars and sixteen cents this is what happens when you have a meeting for three weeks <laughs> And another payroll deduction in the amount of seventy-five thousand thirty-seven dollars and fifty-nine cents. Accounts payable in the amount of four hundred five thousand three hundred fifty-two dollars and twenty-four cents. Action file issues. Any action file issues? I have um, <clears throat> two things. Just a reminder that we need to come back to the appointment of election of officials and communicating with whatever political parties there are in town. There's also provision that if the political parties don't respond, then the town clerk makes a recommendation. And then we do a balancing between qualifications and political parties so that there's no one party or another party that's has the membership of those officials we need to remember to come back to that yeah I um, was going to do that at the next meeting because by law it says that you can't do it until after July 15th yeah. and I guess just one we keep it seems that the need for additional policies keep coming up so perhaps we can schedule a meeting yes. to talk about yes. policies in the near future that I, I will be working with the town manager uh, so that next week we will have a date where we will start, you know, we'll at least choose two dates that we'll have, if not more. But let's just start out with two dates to do those. And one other thing, um, Carrie and I exchange emails on um, posting of meetings. That we're meeting the requirement by the meeting board out there, but not necessarily all meetings are posted online. I think that's part of our discussion talking about the uh, IT process and things like that. I yes. just want to bring Truy. Uh, she made a point of making sure that we were posted online as well. I didn't have access to my paper copy and I was going online and mm. it's like, well, I know we have a meeting, so um, I know we were legal as far as posting, but just want to make it for convenience. Agreed. Uh, for our national file issue, I'm going to bring up something I brought up in the future <coughs> and I still, I, I don't know that I've heard what the resolution is if we have one, and that is I continue to get requests for a crosswalk at the Rotary by Emerald Place on Whalem Road, that there's no designated place for people to cross the street there. So drivers and pedestrians don't know what the other is doing and where they should cross. I think when we have an update from the planning board, uh, that would be a good item because there is an answer. Um, I was thinking we had talked about it and you didn't like the answer, <laughs> but it had, um, you know, it has to, it has to do with the engineered plans. And I think that's, that is a something for the planning board to okay. address with the board of selectmen, because I'm not sure, um, 
you know, they they approve the plan, but a crosswalk, I don't know if it if it's for the board of selectmen to require a, cro- a crosswalk. That that would be a good discussion. Yeah, I have. mean, my my dis- I, I agree it should be part of the planning process. I'm more than happy to have that discussion with the planning board. At this point, I just think it's it's clearly just a safety problem, and it, I just think it should be addressed so that people can know where they should do that, because people going around that rotary are not going to stop with no painted line and the, they don't know that they're required to stop. I, I agree that input from the planning board makes sense, but I also think that input from our DPW director is just as important since roadways really fall under the DPW department and the board of selectmen. Um, and I think that as was pointed out by the chair, it's a safety issue. So I think that it needs to be addressed and it needs to be addressed quickly. Um, you know, the crosswalk that was, was put here for made sense from a public safety perspective and I think that we need to act quickly on this because we don't want a tragedy down there. Well, I, I think part of the problem is crosswalks go from sidewalk to sidewalk and if you don't have any sidewalks and you put crosswalks I, I think there's a, a liability issue <coughs> so this is okay. something for somebody somebody other than me to discuss but it's um, there are solid engineering reasons why it wasn't done. Doesn't mean it can't be done, but people should, I think, should understand the the background. Okay. And there usually aren't. There are different standards for crosswalks around a rotary versus a regular intersection, so you may have to have them on all the streets that enter it at a point. So effectively, a circular crosswalk. So it depends on where where the biggest issue is and whether we can have a temporary one. Sure. So subject, but once you take an action, then you may be liable as opposed to not taking an action. And that's that's why the town manager is correct as far as and Mrs. Bertram as far as getting the DPW uh, director involved so that we get that. The same thing as what was going on with Townsend Arbor Road and Malpas Road. There are different solutions, but you have to make sure you're doing it right from the start. Well, I can say that we haven't done this right from the start, so I think that's already out there. But uh, that's, I mean, yeah, we have, we have a, a lakefront <clears throat> that people continually walk, and, and it is desirable to walk along. Right. And yet you get to the end of that, and you don't know what you're supposed to do. Just go all the way back to Lemonster and cross over there. I mean, even if we said to people, I don't even think there's a crosswalk even outside of the rotary. So from, no. from the rotary all the way through the end of, from Emerald Place. I don't know that there's a crosswalk anywhere there. So how do people from Emerald Place supposed to get across? And it's a, it was designed to be accessible to them. Right. So, I mean, I, I think we need to have the discussion. I just rather have it sooner than later. And, and I, I think I may be a little more assertive now because I've been asking this for right. uh, a long time. And so. just to, to, for a point of information, uh, Carrie, the, the rotary was built as part of the Emerald Place yes. part. Yes, so that's part of why the planning board's involved right. in the whole process. Okay, thank you. Okay, committee reports. Uh, board of Health. Uh, no new topics. Uh, capital planning. Uh, meeting tomorrow morning. Uh, we've completed the, uh, the procedures for the upcoming year and are now uh, finalizing and sending out the calendar. Excellent. Finance Committee. Uh, has not had a meeting since my last report. Their next meeting is uh, Thursday of this week where they'll welcome uh, two new members and be up to full, full strength. Excellent. Library Board of Trustees. Um, nothing new other than that they have a lot of summer programs um, to certainly look on the website and uh, the Lunenburg Ledger has publicized it as well. Um, they're taking uh, some time off in summer for the regular meetings. The MPO. Uh, the next MPO meeting is next Wednesday. And planning board. The planning board meeting last night, um, there were a number of issues that were discussed. Highfield Village is looking for uh, another extension um, <laughs> to, uh, they were looking. <laughs> we just put that well, with that the procedures. Was, well, that was sort of the reaction of the planning board. <laughs> so what they did do, they were looking for um, August or September and the planning board was not willing to do that they the it expired June 30th so what they did I'm sorry it expired uh, last night so what they did do is extend it until July 22nd which is their next meeting but they want a detailed explanation as to why the extension is needed um, 
so uh, there was it's been thought that it was the sewer commission um, mr Locke, the chair of the sewer commission was here last night and explained that the sewer commission um, while initially had some concerns and wanted it rerouted um, there is not currently a plan before a revised plan before the sewer commission um, there was some delay with the mepa uh, filing and, and the sewer commission work with them on that um, so that is one of the reasons for the delay, but, but the planning board wants a detailed explanation and, 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 and along with that a timeline on when um, things are going to be completed and, and um, a detailed project plan. The Emerald Place at Whalem, um, the, a question came up as to um, when the project, it's currently all rentals, leased to own, when at some point it will become owned versus leased. Um, so that came up and, and that question will will be followed up by the planning director. Tritown, they are working on the financial report to receive the incentive payments for the new building that's going up. And the planning director indicated that she's working with someone from the state on the 40S application and perhaps the town manager can shed some more light on this than, than what was given last night. But Apparently there's some confusion as to whether or not we're eligible for, for 40S and it's basically because in order to be eligible you have to show that the students cut, raise the cost of providing the education. And I don't know if you've been involved in the, in the 40S process or? Well, I've, I've been learning about it as we went. Um, we are eligible or we were eligible to apply in fiscal 13. There was some confusion about whether or not we were eligible because eligibility is based on the date the, the, date the uh, certificate of occupancies were issued. So there was some question about that, but it was determined that we were eligible to apply in fiscal 13 and the state um, is still allowing us to apply for fiscal 13 because there was confusion on the part of the state as well. So we will, we are in the process of filing. Um, it will be a late submission, but the state has already acknowledged that they will s accept it and process it. And what we will receive in 40S payments has to do with um, being able to demonstrate that by providing education to students at Tritown, we've increased our the costs of education. So there's a, a lengthy process that you have to go through to document the costs associated with the students from that development that attend. So we're in the process of putting that together. And then at, essentially at the same time, we'll be applying for fiscal 14 as well. I don't have any idea what type of um, revenue will come into the town as a result of this, uh, but we are in the process of applying. Okay. Um, Asian Imperial, Imperial, the parking issue came up again. Um, there was a discussion or the possibility of looking at increasing parking by, I'm sure you've all seen there's a landscape, detailed landscape around the building that's quite beautiful, but the question came up whether or not it makes sense to look at adding parking there. It's important to know that the, the permit that was issued for Asian Imperial was from the ZBA, um, so it really needs to be addressed by the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, the there was a rather lengthy discussion about marijuana clinics and the state status of regulations and, and what the town wants to do moving forward. The end result was that they are looking at, they're going to be looking at the state regulations as well as what some other communities are doing. Um, it is one community apparently attempted to say no to marijuana clinics, period, and were, was determined that they cannot do that. Um, so you can apparently put a one-year moratorium um, on marijuana clinics and so they are looking at all the different regulations and what other communities are doing and and hope to get all the information put together by the next meeting and then review in detail in August the excuse me that would require a town meeting vote yes from, okay. because it would be a zoning yes um, Conservation Commission the arrow hearing uh, is at the Arrow Estates has filed with the Conservation Commission and that hearing is uh, July 17th. The um, next meeting of the Planning Board will be July 22nd. It was, it was advertised to be at the Ritter Memorial Building, but it will actually be here. And the reason for that is because Montachusett Regional Planning Commission is coming in to give an overview 
on what they're going to be doing under the DLTA grant for master planning in the town center, what they've discovered and, and the things that um, they're going to be doing moving forward. So that will be on July 22nd. In addition, they'll be reviewing high, high field and having high field attend. Um, a c number of things came up under uh, member issues and board comments. And the first was that the ability of the planning board members to see the plans prior to the presentation by the peer engineer or the applicant. And one of the members requested that five additional plans be required in PDF format so that the board can review them in detail before um, being presented at a public hearing. That raised some questions about the best way to do that, and discussion took place about the ability of having um, a site that's, whether it be Dropbox or something else, Nathan mentioned the possibility of Dropbox or Google Docs or something to share. And then the question became, well, this really needs to come to the Board of Selectmen for a policy and the, and the tech IT people as to how it should be set up, what the parameters should be, how it should be done. Um, so they are requesting that we look at that in addition to our policies on, because rather than submitting PDFs and sending them out via email to every single member, it makes sense to have a central location or a central repository that people can access to look at those plans. Um, so that came up and what the planning board director was asked to do was consult with IT people, the town manager, and possibly the board of selectmen to determine how that can be done. Um, the question of charging a fee for extensions came up and that was really a, a result of the Highfield Village continual extensions um, and whether or not that's a possibility so they'll be looking at that. The planning board is setting goals for both master planning and the, pl and the planning board itself, and that's going to be a discussion in August. Um, the, uh, one of the other issues that came up was the, um, f apparently the issue of a fence being installed at Tritown was presented by uh, Mr. DeBatton Court to the planning board at the last meeting, not last night's meeting, the prior meeting, which I was not in attendance on, but that was raised again last night, as to whether or not that fence is is allowed within the easement that we granted um, and perhaps the, the town manager can comment on this um, but that came up as to whether or not that fence can be there under the fire easement that was granted on the landfill property um, and then one other thing that also I had a question on that came up is that apparently the planning board has been advised that they can't distribute confidential emails relative to legal um, issues can no longer be distributed via email and I just wanted to get a clarification on that because I wasn't aware of that um, is that a new policy or is that a new advice from town council or, or exactly where that's coming from but that came up in, in the discussion as well um, I'm not aware that you can't do that okay so perhaps we can just let the planning board mm -hmm. know that, that that is not, in fact, the case. Um, and do you have any information on the fence at Tritown? Well, I, I um, sent the license agreement over to the planning director to, to take a look at. Um, I mean, that, that license was the, the board signed or the board approved the license for the for the fire access road. I remember we had discussions, probably joint meeting with the planning board because we talked about a number of issues relative to that project. I didn't have the opportunity to look at the license agreement um, to see if that fence is mentioned, but the developer did indicate that the fence was was mentioned in there and that they had authorization through that license agreement to put the fence up and just in working with this developer I don't have any reason to believe it's not in there but I didn't have the opportunity yesterday to look at the license I, I do think that's something I, I remember the lengthy meetings we actually had a number of meetings on this easement and and I remember reading it and I don't remember any recollection of offense mm -hmm. and one of the concerns that I have is during the whole Arrow Estates process one of the questions that came up was adverse possession um, and the installation of a fence and incorporating it to into the development versus an easement to pass and repass is very different than incorporating it into the project plan. So I'd just like to understand if there's any legality associated with that and exactly what the easement says as to the construction of this fence. So I think it's something we do need to look at and perhaps it needs to be on one of our future agendas. I know the developer did tell the planning director that they 
that he would move the fence if if they didn't have the authorization to put the fence up. But I will um, put that on. The question is whether they have an easement for a fence, and if they have an easement for a fence, there won't be an adverse possession. But um, but the question is how long is the easement for, and they may effectively have it for a long time. <coughs> and that's it from me. Well, the, the, the reason we went with a license agreement was so that they would have this in perpetuity. Um, and, and that's uh, another one of my concerns is, is uh, again, I think a, a pass and repass for fire access is very different than constructing a fence and making it part of a project. Well, I guess we're going to have to see the plans and right. see where the fence is and look at the licensing and review it ourselves and with the plan. <coughs> Pack. Um, before we go that, uh, the going back to the uh, uh, confidential information through email, I don't believe, as Kerry noted, that that would be not allowed. The issue becomes whether email is secure, mm -hmm. and the presumption is email is not secure unless it's encrypted. And so, therefore, when you have confidential information, somebody may hack into it because it's going over the Internet, and therefore the information may be at risk. So whether it's a policy versus the, the legality, um, that may be something we ought to address during the policy process. Um, I was yeah, on, the, on the same topic, I, I, I think uh, the discussion also talked to uh, public information and, and the dissemination of public information, and there was a concern expressed that that, that <laughs> wasn't secure, and by its very definition, public should be public. So I think a policy could address what, in fact, needs to be encrypted and what, in fact, should be more than easily accessible. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I agree. Uh, the Public Access Committee, I was un unable to make the meeting, um, but they did distribute um, documents to me. Um, they have a wealth of information of what how they program and everything. I'll be in communication with them because it would be nice, actually, if that was made public through the website and just share that information to others. Excellent. School committee. <clears throat> Last met uh, a couple of weeks back. At that point, they were making some budget adjustments to close out the year. They're looking ahead. They're going to, they've <laughs> hired a new uh, special services director, which had position had been cut along the way. Uh, they are reinstituting the primary school music program, and they are returning to a vice principal position as opposed to a dean of students at the middle school. So. And school building, school building committee. We haven't met, I don't think, since we last met, although we do have interviews coming up with the four finalists for uh, construction managers at risk. I can't remember if that's the 17th or the 22nd. They're going to be 22nd. It's going to be an all-day uh, affair. I'm looking forward to it. Here, here in Lunenburg? <laughs> here in Lunenburg, yeah. It'll be at, uh, well, I'm not sure if it's going to be at TC Pasios or not. We can update that probably next week. Yeah, you know, I was thinking of the school building committee meeting when I said the 22nd. Uh, it's not the 22nd, it's the 24th. So, I don't know when that meeting uh, is, I guess. It's the 17th or 22nd, <laughs> I'll, and I'll clarify by next week. Sewer Commission. Yeah, and if I could actually just go back uh, to Dave. Um, it's my understanding that if we don't build or renovate a school, that our accreditation is at risk? That's part of the discussion, yes. Okay. Yeah. Because that was something I wasn't aware of and why that this is an important issue that the town needs to pay attention to as we go along and that that, that loss of accreditation could really affect the right. standing. Yeah. And it'll come down to we'll either make repairs globally, do the right thing all at once, or we'll do a piecemeal all out of pocket locally. So, uh, but that'll all be part of the conversation into the fall. Um, sewer Commission, um, as pe some people may have noticed, they uh, uh, have the approved project down Lancaster Ave, uh, going down fairly close to Rolling Acres Road, is in process, picking up several houses down there. Uh, we'll certainly add more users to the system, which is help. It will help their financial. Uh, they're in the process of con reviewing their RFP process uh, for uh, maintenance of the system. Uh, that they're meeting tonight as we speak. Um, Highfield Villages continues to be on their agenda, um, and it, that inter interplays with the IMA with Fitchburg for the added capacity uh, that's factored into it, uh, and they want to get some uh, 
documentation from high fields to make sure that they're actually going to do what they're going to do because we will have to be on the hook for that added capacity as a cost to Fitchburg and if they're not going to do it then we wouldn't want to add that capacity so they're they're in discussion with high fields as well as city of Fitchburg at this point um, uh, the zoning board of appeals uh, is having a hearing on the 10th for 321 Whalem Road uh, to add units to that 43 development. Uh, the sewer department's involved because uh, they had uh, worked with the Zoning Board of Appeals to uh, forgive uh, some ex um, connection, no, no, betterment fees f in exchange for improvement of roads within the system. So there was a quid pro quo. So the question will be whether that's being affected by additional units at that point as well. Um, and uh, we're awaiting uh, feedback. Um, city of Fitchburg's uh, city council, uh, city solicitor, has been reviewing the IMA, um, and that should be getting back to us pretty quickly to come back to this board. Excellent. And the uh, mass broadband, uh, I just was uh, received yesterday an update that uh, indicated that. The, the governor's administration is proposing an inclusion of an additional 40 million in new bond funds in the IT bond fund. Uh, and there has been increased interest in last mile plans. Again, just to recap, last mile plans is once the backbone is in for fiber, how do you distribute from the backbone to the businesses and residences in the community is the last mile. And you have to have some entity that does those tap-ins and provides that service. So. They're hoping that the 40 million or part, part of the 40 million will extend to last mile considerations and connectivity in underserved and unserved uh, Massachusetts communities. Uh, again, we are on the eastern edge of that western push. We're one of the first towns uh, to be part of this. Uh, we won't know until it's actually, it's, it's in the House right now, in the House committee, so that we don't know whether, when or if it will be passed, although it does look positive. And as it goes forward, the mass broadband indicates that we understand that many communities may be currently considering investing in their own last mile networks and that companies and vendors may be meeting and working with communities on these efforts. We want you to, to encourage you to contact the Mass Broadband Institute and discuss potential plans. I have done that and, and we are going to be sometime in the next few weeks scheduling a meeting with uh, Mass Broadband and our IT director so that we can all sit down and see what the next step is as they zip up you know, and, and finalize the project that was initially planned, which is uh, very near closing and will be closed any, any, any time in the next few weeks. Mr. Chairman, uh, I'd like to recommend that we add the Building Reuse Committee to future uh, committee reports. Uh, their first meeting will be uh, the 15th of July. Okay, if you can do that, I agree. Were you, were you made in here? Here. Okay. okay. Uh, town manager reports. We are in the process of closing out fiscal 13 at this point in time. Um, it appears that that we may have a couple of adjustments budget adjustments that need to be made there's a provision in mass general law that allows us to make budget adjustments um, at the end of the fiscal year within the, the first um, I believe the first 30 days of the next fiscal year to cover things that have happened since town meeting um, because as you know we we do approve our budget by different categories, so we can't um, transfer between those categories outside of town meeting except through this provision of Mass General Law. So we do have a, a couple of items that we're looking at needing transfers, and that's a process that both the Board of Selectmen and the Finance Committee need to review and approve those. I'm not sure if we will have them for next week, but certainly by the 23rd. Um, the town accountant is on vacation this week, and I, I just need to finalize a couple of things with her. But it, it looks like we're ending the year um, much better than I had expected. Uh, we do have a little bit of wiggle room, which will allow us to, or has allowed us to set aside money for codification of the bylaws, which I was hoping that we would be able to do. 
we did receive one bid. Um, it, it was for sixteen thousand dollars. I was surprised it was that high. I was hoping for ten, and I think ten is what it would have cost maybe ten years ago or something. <laughs> um, but we do have the funds uh, to set aside to do that project. So more details will follow on on um, how we're going to go through that process. We were also able to um, to do another project over at the public safety building. We're doing a lighting upgrade over there. We became aware, aware that we would have this opportunity um, fairly recently. Um, it's a $22,000 project. Unitil is paying 50% of the cost to change out the lighting. So we're going from, I guess, T12 to T8 lighting. It should save about 50% in um, usage over there the the payback is about three and a half years the project is is currently underway and we that's not something that we had planned but we were made aware of this opportunity and because we we ended up having a little bit of extra money in dp in dpw and facilities so we were able to do that project as well so that was that was exciting um i i think you received some information also from john londa regarding um, potential cost savings if if we were to have uh, a gas line extended to that public safety building as well so we are investigating that right now unfortunately um, there's no gas line that um, that goes in front of DPW and in one e in front of public works one end of Mass Ave is serve serviced by Unitel and the other by National Grid and that section of Mass Ave is in no man's land right now so we're looking at what it would Mass cost uh, it's Mass Ave and I'm talking about public uh, public safety and I know I said I said DPW so the, the public safety building so we are looking at at the cost of extending that line and, and if it looks like it's something that we can do hopefully uh, there may be some other businesses that would like to to tie on to that um, but I don't have any further information on that right now um, is that something residences could tie onto as well well I think it, it would depend hopefully hopefully it could be designed so the most number of people could take advantage of that but we'll have to see I'm, I'm not a hundred percent sure about that I did send some information to you about the fiscal 14 budget in terms of the state budget and I'm we're still awaiting to see what the governor will do with that um, the legislature finally approved the fiscal 14 budget last week and the governor has 10 days so we're still within that 10-day period so we need to wait and see what he will do with that but the the net result for the town of Lunenburg was a, additional revenue of something just under fifty thousand dollars and that's that's net if you because uh, we received additional revenue but our um, choice and charter assessments were higher and our choice assessment was significantly higher in the final version of the budget and I'm not sure um, how it went up so much from what the House had and what the Senate had because I don't know why those numbers would change because they're still looking at enrollments um, April and October enrollments so I, I'm not sure why that changed um, but the the chapter 70 um, revenue went up by about $95,000 so I think that's something that we're going to have to reconcile um, the chapter 70 went up about 95 but we had some other costs that went up and when you net them out we're looking at about $50,000 but we may um, this is something I will talk to the finance commi committee about as well but uh, I'm sure there's going to be an interest in having that full $95,000 go to the school. So that, that's something that will need to be resolved. Chapter 70, that revenue has to be appropriated. Um, so nothing can be done with that until, it w until it's appropriated at special town meeting, which isn't going to be until December. But that, I'm sure there will be some discussion between now and then about what we're going to do with that money. And the last thing that I wanted to mention to you is we um, tried out a new application on a couple of roads, on four roads, um, Arbor, Fish, Burridge, and I can't remember the, f the fourth one off the top of my head. Um, we did a, a different type of application. Every 
year we have a discussion about potholes, filling potholes. And we budget a certain amount of money to fill potholes. Well, then we have, we have sections of road that, that um, it's more than potholes. And a lot of people think they're potholes, but when you have 25 potholes in 200 feet of road, it's, you're not talking about a pothole anymore. <laughs> you're talking about something else. So these four, these four roads um, were ones where we kind of had that condition, where we had a lot of what people might consider potholes, but, but they needed something more. So we had a little bit of, of money left over within the budget, and we tried a new application. And if I'm going to take, we have some pictures uh, before and after, and, and I've been meaning to get that together to send out to you, because I, I think we did some good work with short money. It was about $6,000 at each location um, to fix these roads, and, and I, I think we did something good here. The next one on the list would be Mulpus. So if you're familiar with Mulpus and you know what the condition, if you haven't been, if you don't go down Arbor Fish or, or Burridge, but you go down Mulpus, um, but Mulpus, it's almost the full section, the full length of Mulpus that is in the same condition that these much smaller sections were. So we didn't include Mulpus because we didn't have enough money. Mulpus is probably, you know, more like, um, if these were 6000 that's probably more like $18,000. That would be the next location that we would do something like this where we're trying to buy, you know, maybe five years or so where we have something bigger than potholes, but people are still thinking these are potholes. But I will get those pictures out to you in a, a, a more technical explanation of what we did, but I think this is something that we might try, you know, we'll do some potholes, but where we have these other sections, <coughs> we, we might continue to try this if, um, if that holds up like we expect it to. If we could just get an update on the paving plan, and one of the things I should have mentioned under the MPO um, is that MassDOT did come out and take a look at uh, Chase Road and did send an email to myself and the town manager and the DPW director that they would consider that a book job, meaning that it would not have to go through the engineering um, before moving forward with that project. The problem with that is that um, the... Um, TIP has already been finalized, so we've, we've missed that window. Um, so the earliest that we could revisit that is next year, and we could potentially revise it and include it in the next TIP, but it wouldn't be until next year. Um, and I'm not sure where the DPW stands with Chase Road is the next top priority in the pavement management plan. Um, so I'm just curious as to what his plans are as for paving, what roads are going to be addressed. Um, mm -hmm. You know, as, as, as we get into the construction season or are already in that construction <coughs> season. So if we could get an update from him on his paving plan. Mm -hmm. For the, a list of those roads that have consecutive and continuous potholes, I know that part of Kilburn was done. Uh, there is still a pretty sizable section of Kilburn that, that you really start trying to dodge and ride over because it really is almost untravelable mm -hmm. without shaking bolts in your car so and island road is in the same type of condition so i just like to understand the from a priority standpoint how how those are being rated and i know if i go back and look at the pavement management plan but if the dbw director could just come and give us an overview yep. is that that conclude your report Oh, the only other thing I wanted to mention is, as you know, we did open the Regional Dispatch Center um, June 18th, which was actually our last meeting of, of this board, and we, at, we did open at 7 o'clock that night as we were starting our meeting that evening. We were starting our Regional Dispatch Center. Lunenburg was the first community to go over. Sometime um, either maybe the last meeting of this month or the the first meeting of next month, I would like to have the regional, the director of the regional facility and our two chiefs come over and talk about the experience. Um, all in all, it, it has gone very well, um, but there certainly have been some hiccups along the way. I don't think, 
or I know that none of them have, have caused any issues with public safety, but it, it has been a big change, particularly for the police department that uh, where the dispatchers really perform a lot of uh, tasks on behalf of the police department, which we, we knew about. Um, and they are still from regional dispatch, still doing that. But it's been a very interesting process. Um, but it, it did, the transition was about as smooth as we could have expected. Uh, there was a, the Essex County facility was attempting to open right around the same time as we did. And the state actually shut them down because they had not taken into account everything that they had taken into account and made some, I, I think, some pretty big errors over there. We didn't experience anything like that here, so it's something that we should all be proud of, um, and, and I would like to bring the director over, because you, I know you haven't had the opportunity to meet him. He was hired in January and has been working close to seven days a week since then. And at this point in time, Lunenburg, Lancaster, and Devons are all being dispatched out of um, the Regional Dispatch Center. Harvard is the fourth community, and they will be coming on sometime in August, I think probably the end of August. Harvard was probably um, the, the nice thing about being the first one over in the largest community we were, I would say most advanced in terms of dispatching using the most current um, software, most current versions of, of the software. Uh, essentially, all of our protocols here were brought over to the dispatch center. Harvard is probably on the other end. They were using a different type of software. The protocols are a lot different, and that's why they are coming in last. Lancaster and Devons were close to what we were doing. Uh, but it's been, we, we will have a grand opening over there because it is something, you know, it's been running in the background. We've been all working on it uh, for a long time. But it is definitely something for the, for the community to be proud of. We're a leader in the state of Massachusetts in terms of regional dispatch. And we should take the opportunity to celebrate our success. I'm going to come back to the item that was tabled, which was the 7 p.m. request for a common VIC license uh, for Tarnum Williams doing business as Kebabalicious. And since the applicant is not here, I would ask that we table that and put that or, uh, put that for a next meeting and ask for the applicant to be present without objection from the board. Uh, appointments and resignations. So we have a resignation, Mr. Sund, who has... Uh, <coughs> You know, recently been on this this board, uh, will be moving, and he has submitted two letters of resignation to the task force, the Green Communities Task Force, who we heard from their chair earlier today, and also from the Memorial Day Committee. Uh, Mr. Sun has been uh, involved in town government ever since I got started here, and probably well before that. Uh, involved in so many things with the veterans organization and he was instrumental in creating the Memorial Day Committee he was very big in the, com the Green Communities Task Force as well as well as all the other positions that he's held so uh, it is with uh, regret that we will be losing him but with happiness that he will be uh, you know going where he's been wanting to go for a long time down south so uh, I will accept his resignations here and if we can uh, write him a very uh, le nice letter thanking him for all of his years of service throughout uh, all of his tenure here in Lunenburg. That is the agenda. Uh, any final public comment from the board? I do want to make an announcement that I wish I had made during the announcements at the beginning. But for those who don't already know, and of course our own Mr. Ebersol was featured on the front page for this event, that the farmer's market was moved from Mondays to Sundays uh, at the same location right across the street here at the, uh, the Ritter building uh, back parking lot. And the hours are from uh, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. So uh, I believe that that change has gotten a lot more 
a community involvement because more people are around in town on Sundays than they are on Mondays at, from, uh, I think it was three to six previously. So uh, again, with the new Agricultural Commission being formed and so many wonderful places that uh, sell at the farmer's market, I would urge people to please support your local farmers, whether they're vegetable growers or meat providers or egg providers, fruit, whatever. Uh, it really is a chance to know where your food is grown and to support people doing something that's been part of this community since its founding all the way back in uh, 1728. So uh, I will try to remember that next time to announce it at the beginning of the meeting. Uh, any public comment from the public? Okay, we do have an executive session planned under Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21A, Subsection 9, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the government's bargaining or litigating position and the chair so declares. Mr. Chair. Mr. Matthews. I think we need to note the topic of conversation. Yeah, I was going to say that, yes. That Sorry, didn't mean to get out of here. Oh, no, that's good, no. Uh, it is not here and we should for in the future put it down, but it is to- last time, but we didn't do that. <laughs> it is to discuss the police union contract. So moved. That we will not be returning to uh, open session. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Mr. Ibersol. Aye. Mr. Toll. Aye. Mr. Matthews. Aye. Mrs. Bertram. Aye. And I for myself. Good night, everyone. We will see you next Tuesday.